Okay. There's another really sticky wicket with ancestor work, and that is when you have slavers and the slaves in your line. And many, 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 many people in North America have that, have that issue and that heartbreak. How do you yeah. negotiate that? Um, what, do you, what do you do when you have collaborators and those who laid down their lives for a cause? What do you do when you have Native Americans and you're also descended from the, from the soldiers that gave the orders and carried them out to wipe them out? What do you do if you have both Jewish ancestry and ancestors who are Nazis? It's not easy. And that can take a great deal of engagement to sort out. And there's no easy answer to that. It really depends on where your ancestors are in terms of what, how they want to engage with you, how they want to engage with each other. I've written a lot about this, um, both on my blog and on the columns that I do at patheos.com. Um, I write for their pagan portal. And it really, really depends on how willing and ready your ancestors are to make amends and engage with each other. You are the current incarnation and manifestation of your entire ancestral line. So you might bear the brunt for playing intercessor. There are times where you may have to make a choice and cut one side off. But usually, if your dead are willing to engage, you can work it out, which does not mean it's going to be easy. It's usually one of the most difficult and agonizing things that an ancestor worker will have to do, but it can be done. One of the other things Laura does address and one of the issues I've had to deal with, abusive relatives, people who you can't really bring yourself to honor because frankly, yeah. they don't deserve it. Well, sometimes you'll find that they really do realize how horribly abusive they were and they are contrite and they want to make amends. And then it's up to you. The relationship can be healed even after the person dies. That's one option. Note that I said there's a willingness to take responsibility on the part of the dead person and there is sorrow for the damage that they did. If that willingness and that sorrow, that contrition isn't there, you don't have to engage with them. If someone was terribly abusive to you and their personality did not experience any great enlightenment after they died, there are rituals that can be done to block them from your ancestral line. You can call upon your other ancestors to, to protect you. You do not need to engage with someone who is hurtful to you in life if you do not wish to. That brings up another really important idea. One of the artifacts of the monotheist mind, in contradictory to their theology, is that when you die, you somehow become good. How You become immediately enlightened, and everything's good, and you're wise, you show people the way. That's more New Age crap. It doesn't work that way. Some people, when they die, do do have an epiphany. I mean, you get to see a little bit more of, of, the, of the big picture, but some people remain exactly the same. These are individuals that we're dealing with, and death doesn't confer any great enlightenment automatically. So it has to be de dealt with on an individual basis. There's no, there's no quick fix. There's no hard and fast rule with ancestor work. This is a process of ongoing, consistent engagement. And you're dealing with individuals, not magical beings that are all knowing and all good and, and, and will give you what you want like some cosmic gumball machine. You have to deal with them as the individuals they are. And if you are actively and properly engaged with your ancestors, they will guide you. And if you can get it right with your ancestors, they will teach you how to get it right with your holy powers. That is the beauty of ancestor engagement. They'll teach you how to get it right, and you get those, these practices can be restored. Um, a colleague of mine, um, she's, she, she grew up practicing uh, Cuban Santeria. Uh, she told me about a woman that she had met who had reclaimed her ancestral tongue. There were no living speakers of this language 
her ancestors taught her. Think about that. Think about that. That's the beauty of what, of this type of engagement. Not just that every ancestor offering is a revolutionary act, but the immense reciprocity involved. Two of the motifs that are popping up in the last 10 years in our culture are things like Ancestry.com, on I one hand. I think they're great. Well, that is. But on the other spectrum, you've got ghost hunting. My question is, do you think these are symptomatic and distracting from our actual ancestor work? Like, I think Ancestry.com is an incredibly valuable resource. And I think that that might be a sign of a manifestation of people's hunger for connection. Hunger to know their roots and where they came from. How can you know where you're going if you don't know where you came from? Ghost hunters, please. They need to stop disrespecting the dead. It's the most sloppy load of horseshit that I have ever seen. And I think, I think that they've been very lucky so far. They need to stop disrespecting the dead. Because that's what it is. It's absolute disrespect. And those shows make me very angry very angry. They're setting a terrible example. You know, you just, you just want to grab the producers and say, what are you doing? First of all, you have these untrained incompetents blundering around into these spaces. I'm going to clean a house. Well, you know what? Maybe that dead person has a right to be there. They don't know what they're doing and they're setting a horrible example. It's disrespectful. That is not engaging with your dead. It's spitting in their eye. Um, if people want to read more about your work, um, you have your, you've got your work at Pentheus Portal. I have a ton of books available on Amazon.com. Um, I maintain a weekly column at the Pagan Portal on Patheos.com, which is a leading interfaith um, online journal, I guess you'd call it. I maintain a blog at kraskova.weebly.com and I do a quarterly column in the magazine Witches and Pagans. I think that's, occasionally I have pieces coming out in other people's devotionals, but I usually put updates on my blog, so I think that's, that if you want to follow my work, that's pretty much where you'd want to go. Okay. All right. Thank you so much You're for sharing welcome. everything that you've given us today. A lot of us, um, a lot of us are going to say thank you, and a lot of us are going to begin to put these things into practice. Don't worry about doing it wrong. Just do it with an open heart. Do it. That's the important thing. Just get out there and get started. Thank you. Thank you so much.